Welcome back to the Sasquatch Discovery Project. This is Jeremy. I've got an article from Washington State. Uh, this was published in 1940. The author is Marion Smith. It is entitled Giants, the Puyallup Nisqually, uh, published in New York AMS Press. Now, this mentions a tribe of Indians referred to as giants. It does not mention that they are covered with hair. This might fall more into the wild man category, but an interesting account for sure. A race of tall Indians called wild or stick Indians was said to wander through the forest. In general conversation, they were referred to as siatko, although another term, stitat, from tat, spear, could also be applied to them. The Siatko lived by hunting and fishing. Their homes were hollowed out like the sleeping places of animals and could not be distinguished as human habitations. It was largely because of this lack of any houses or villages that they were characterized as wild. They wandered freely through the wooded country, their activities being mainly confined to the hours of darkness. As has been said, they were abnormally tall, always well over six feet. Their language was a sort of whistle, and even when people could not see them, they often heard this whistle in the distance. They had no canoes, nor did they ever travel by water. The giants played pranks on the village Indians, stealing the fish from their nets at night, going off with their half-cured supplies under cover of darkness, etc. Sometimes, pranks on the persons of individual men, such as removing their clothes and tying their legs apart, were made possible by a sort of hypnotic helplessness engendered by the sound of the giant's whistle. The giants were dangerous to men if the latter interfered with them or caused hurt to one of their members. Under these conditions, their hatred was implacable, and they always tracked the culprit down until finally they killed him with a shot from their bows. Occasionally, also, they stole children or adolescents and carried them off to act as wives or as slaves. For this reason, children were mortally afraid of going about alone at night, and the Siatko threat was used in child discipline. During the summer camping trips when mat houses with loose sides were used for shelter, children always slept in the center, surrounded by their elders, for fear that the Siatko would lift the mats and spirit them away. Men avoided conflicts with the giants, and women retained the fear of them throughout their lives. Thus, one informant, a woman approaching 70, broke her habit of rising before dawn and going to an outhouse at some distance from her home because she heard the whistle of a giant one morning. This happened during the winter of 1934-35. Actual killing or capture of giants was said not to have been infrequent. Two of the more detailed of such accounts follow. In my grandfather's time, Saltwater, around 1850, his people captured a Sietko boy and raised it. The child slept all day, then went out nights when everyone else was asleep. In the morning, they would see where he had piled up wood or caught fish or brought in a deer. Finally, they told him he could go back to his people. He was gone many years and then came back once. He brought his Siatko band with him and the Indians could hear them whistle all around. He said he came just for a visit to see them. Then he went away for good. A man from Skykomish, who was a little older than I am, told me that he and some of his friends killed a Siatko once. There were several of them, but the others got away. It was in the daytime, and maybe they couldn't see so well. The one they killed had a bow and arrow, and was dressed in some kind of skin. Cougar, I guess. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time right here at the Sasquatch Discovery Project.